to Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. My name is Julie and I'm here to impart some knowledge to you today via a two minute art tip. And today we're doing a little bit of an expanded version because I have a special guest here with me. This is Andrew from McPherson's and he's going to talk to us about a whole bunch of different product. But first we're going to start in with the Raphael Innovative Kalinsky brushes. So take it away. Tell us all about it. Fantastic. Thank you, Julie. So with the Raphael Innovative Synthetic Kalinsky brush, it's the newest Raphael brush to the line and we're, we're just exceedingly excited about it. I hope everybody else is too. There's a, some really neat things about this line that I'm excited about. So the first is Raphael's history. They started making brushes over 200 years ago. They are the oldest artist brush manufacturer in Europe. They are really well known for their natural Kalinsky sable brush, the 8404. Very famous brush all over the world. And we are no longer able to import Kalinsky sable into the US. So with that, Raphael said, we have a solution. We are, we're gonna create a synthetic brush uh, and they used the 8404 as a model and they created this brush from scratch. They make the handles, they make the lacquers, they make the ferrules, they make the bristles. So even these synthetic filaments are made in-house by Raphael and they're made to match the natural flags, the natural thicknesses of a Kalinsky hair. So they, they just perform, I think, really, really well and I'm very excited about the range. Uh, maybe we should play with a few of them and show people what they're okay. what they're up to. Well, I'm excited too. So I'm going to grab this number six here. Uh, this is this is the size I've been using the most often. Is this number six round? And you know, I just did that. I'm going to show people that that one of the things I'm excited about this with is the snap. It just springs back into action. I'm just going to do a little clean water here so you can see that it's spreading out. This number six spreading out on the paper, mm -hmm. and just like any brush, it keeps that shape. But then it snaps right back. Right. So we're really excited that snap is just like a natural, natural Kalinsky would have. Uh, and I just want to make some marks here. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of, a little bit of this brown pink color and just see what the capacity of this brush looks like. Yeah, and no, your eyes aren't deceiving you. He did say brown pink. <laughs> I did. We'll talk, <laughs> we'll talk a little bit about that in the next video. <laughs> but I'm, I'm really excited. It seems to, yeah. to be able to capture everything from some really fine detail for a number six. Mm -hmm. Exactly what I'd... Well, and the cool part about manufacturing all of the pieces is that you guys have ultimate control over the product. There's not going to be irregularity f because from front to back you're doing the whole thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And having hands on it. It's a, you know, a very handmade product. Human beings are involved in every step of the process. So throughout that, they're keeping an eye out for quality control. So a brush that doesn't meet those standards that they have is never going to leave the factory. Right. Uh, we don't do anything like brush seconds. Uh, if it if it fails, we just create another brush. Well, I know here at Cheap Joe's, that's something that we appreciate because the supply chain problems exaggerated all those kind of irregularities and it made that all those idiosyncrasies that much worse, yep. you know. And I'm playing around with a dagger. Um, you can kind of see how interesting uh, that shape makes. Now, Raphael's uh, 8404 line that this stemmed from was only rounds. We only had rounds mm -hmm. because that's traditionally the most common watercolor brush. But with this range, they decided to release a nice set of rounds, uh, a couple of flats, a couple of daggers. There's some angled uh, detail brushes. There's some spot detailers, some extra fine rounds. Mm -hmm. uh, there's even a travel brush. So we're, we're really excited about the new range. And you and I were talking a little bit about daggers earlier, and what they, it's kind of a new a new trend in watercolor to be using something like a dagger. Now, what what's interesting about that kind of a brush? I I think it's because you can make um, so many different kinds of marks in a single stroke. I became interested in daggers because of a friend of mine who introduced me to them, and it, it's because they come from sign painters and pinstriping backgrounds. Um, and so they're meant to be pulled um, across the space that you're uh, using. But pr 
pressure is the, the whole thing. Um, and the unique thing about this brush is it's got the kind of snap that's going to respond. So you get, you, you get a quality like this where you can make a shape in one continuous movement that's, you know, you're moving from thick thin and all I, kinds of different I stuff. I love that. And so it, it looks very calligraphic. Is that why it was a, a kind of a popular sign painting brush? Yes, uh, they would use it for lettering um, because you could, you could execute a serif in one stroke, you know, with a push pull. Uh, and so it does fascinating things. And even the exaggerated daggers, uh, the really, really long ones, you'll see artists, they'll like smack it down and then pull. And I like that it does mark. really cool things, yes. you know? So, and this one is, is strong enough to be able to handle that uh, because of the, the synthetic fiber. Now it's it's all black on black on these designs. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things I like to to point out, and I asked about very early on, was uh, the durability of things like the ferrule. You know, it's coated it's coated in a lacquer, so uh, sometimes you don't know what it's made out of underneath that. I found out that it is a brass ferrule under there, so it can withstand water. You know, just like our plumbing fixtures are made of brass because of the, the uh -huh. amount of water they need to be able to take. So I'm excited that we're not using something that's cheap or not durable just because we're coating it. So it's got that natural natural hand handle coated in that black paint, matte black paint, and then the glossy uh, black ferrule, but it's brass underneath. I was talking to a friend of mine that does a lot of plain air, and their first reaction to this was like, ooh, this is perfect for plain air because it's not reflective. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, and I, I don't do enough plain air to know, but that was her first thing out of her mouth, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I didn't think about that. Now this brush that I'm I'm playing a little bit with, uh, I grabbed this number four and it's this angle detailer, and I've been seeing a couple a couple more of these in artist studios, uh, and I'm really excited. We decided to launch this line with it, and it became popular from a few different things. I've seen it outside of the watercolor studios. Uh, we've seen it in Japanese calligraphy, mm -hmm. but and there's hockey brushes with that angle. Uh, and things like that, but we've also seen a lot of makeup brushes having this shape. Yeah, because uh, eyeliner stuff. And it makes a lot of sense to me to use it for art because <laughs> the point you have, the reason you have that angle is so that your hands not impeding your view uh -huh. as you're applying things. Well, it's not natural to stick things in your eye. And and with this, <laughs> I like that if you're going in for a fine detail, let's, mm -hmm. let's grab a little a little dark color here, with some of this neutral tint. And if I wanted to just put a little teeny dot down. My, my hand is not blocking the point right. of view. I could just apply little teeny, teeny bits of color and see exactly where I'm doing it. So I really like that, that angled detail of that. Yeah. And it didn't get in a, in a little accident. It's meant to be angled. It's, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm having fun with that. I have to confess when you sent it to me, I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and then I looked it up, I was like, oh, okay. And we have some flats in this line too. And I'm always excited for flats because they have that sharp, sharp edge to them. So I really think that the versatility of the shapes they came out with is fantastic. Well, and you don't have that brush super loaded. And the true test of a good flat is when it's not splitting, that it's still holding that firm shape. So load it, load even it with dry brush, it's uh, staying that nice rectangular shape. Now I'm of course I'm using a cold press that's got a little little more tooth than I usually use but let's have a look here on this hot press. Nice. I expect it to be done by now. Yeah, but it's charged and ready to go. So you have plenty of color hold and color carry. Wow. Ha ha. I love that. Yeah. So wonderful new range of Raphael brushes. There is going to be 28 brushes in that range, plus the 29th brush is this travel brush. <laughs> uh, you'll be able to find it in stores. 
Anytime. It's, yeah, and hope that you learn some interesting new things about the new Raphael Innovative Kalinsky Sables available right here at Cheap Joe's, and we hope that you enjoy. Thank you.